Yo, so respectfully, I do not like the sound of high-end turntables with all the respect in the world, okay? It's just me. I just don't like the sound of how high-end turntables are turning out to be. Now in the past, as a young audiophile getting into this hobby, right? I quickly adopted the turntable hobby as well. It was a big part of my hi-fi journey. Now, granted, you know, I don't, I'm not a turntable expert. Like, I like this stuff, but it's different from speakers, amplifiers. It, I consider turntables as a whole system because there's so many components to it, like cartridge, the bearings, the platter, the, the mat, you know, the thickness of the mat matters apparently on Lin turntables. I didn't know that. You know, the plinth, everything. Everything matters on the turntable and it's an entire different system. And it quickly builds up to be a very expensive system at that if you go crazy. And I've, I've been there. I've owned a, you know, Kuesu cartridge that was $7,000. I've owned, you know, multiple turntables before, you know, Thorin's, I've modified Thorin's turntables before. So I've been that path of, you know, turntable kind of craziness. And it brought me incredible amount of enjoyment because of that warm characteristic. For me, turntable sound was more than a ritual, okay? It sounded better than any DAC that I could afford with the money I had. I knew that if I bought a Thorin turntable, I would get that warm, classic, you know, turntable sound. Yes, some people in my age, especially my friend, you know, Tujin, for example, can't take the staticiness or the pops and, you know, cracks of the turntable sound. For me, that didn't matter because I knew that if I used a very quiet phono stage and a very quiet cartridge along with a decent turntable, then I can get away with some of the cracks and pops because i rather have that than have brittleness on the top frequency that's murdering my ears. For me, the tone, the overall musicality was what I was trying to achieve. And I did that with turntables, vintage turntables. When it comes to modern turntables, I expected things to be better more clear sounding, more lower noise floor, you know, more detail, but overall more musical, higher end, right? More money I spent, I should get more musicality. Well, that was not the case. When I heard clear audio turntables, for example, or, and I'm not talking about every clear audio turntable, let's make it very clear, or am I saying that all high end turntables sound this way, but a lot of the higher end turntables I've heard as a young audiophile um, sounded to me brittle, sounded to me overly detailed, like look at me kind of sound. It was less about, you know, the musicality and the music that it delivered, rather it was about a competition between how clear it sounded with lower noise floor and how, you know, clear and more detailed it could possibly be. Okay, sure, some audio files may like that. If that's you, then, you know, turntable higher, you know, higher end turntable game is surely it. But for me, as someone who enjoys the overall musicality and the overall warmth of the sound, and that's what defines music for me, it was hard to like high end turntables. And that's when I found a modern turntable that I could reliably use without the motor problems of a vintage turntable. You know, there's problems that arises with turntables, turntable users. You know, I'm sure you're with me on this. Um, every time you go to a turntable and you try something, especially with vintage turntables, either you need a new belt sometimes, you need a new motor. There's a lot of care that needs to go into a turntable system. So something that I can buy in a modern day and age with the upgrades I've, of something that I expect from a modern turntable, like an upgrade from a vintage turntable, was really required for me. And I was searching for that. Now, one brand that's today modern that I consider it to be a upgrade from the vintage turntables that I had is the Well-Tempered. Now, this is not my turntable. This is actually borrowed from Bernard Lee from Charisma Audio. He is the distributor in Canada for this uh, turntable. And he's actually a long friend of mine, audiophile, audiophile friend of mine. And so I borrowed it from him to do this review for you guys. Now, partially it was also for me because I was looking for a turntable that sounded overall warm um, and can be really enjoyed. So I've been having some time with this turntable for the past month and a half or so, uh, graciously, thankfully, you know, with the patience of Bernard Lee. 
Now this is the Amethyst Junior, which is one of the newest turntables from Well Tempered. Now Well Tempered is a pretty famous brand when it comes to uh, turntables because of its natural presentation and because of its warmth and because of its overall musicality. And that's done through multiple different factors, but one of it being their signature move is the tone arm they're using with a golf ball. So if you see here, there's a golf ball inside here. And that in itself is dipped into a silicon in their newer tone arm setup. And again, I am not totally 100% sure on what this has effect into the overall sound of the turntable. Like I said, turntable is an entire system as a whole, and it can really be hard to decipher what component of the sound is better because of that one golf ball in there dipped in silicon. But if you go to their website, they can you can see the descriptions of what they said there. And I'm not an expert with these things like I said before, so you can go and uh, read that. I'll link it in the description below. But overall, other than that, one of the things that was intriguing to me, again, was the bearing under the platter is a triangle. And this is odd because usually it's like a circle or you know a rectangle of some sort. But this is interesting and one of the reasons that you know they did this according to Bernard Lee is because they wanted minimal contact. Now this way they have minimal contact and therefore it really allows the turntable to um, hit the walls less, if that makes sense. Uh, so this is all, again one of the factors that makes this turntable warm sounding, luscious, you know, you know, beautiful tracking and all that stuff. But to me this turntable sounds as correct as any turntable should. Now before we go on and talk about other stuff here, I'm sure I messed up something already. But please be not so critical on this video because like I said, this is my first time really reviewing a turntable in the first place and I just wanted to share with you the cool things this turntable has apart from the normal traditional high-end turntables that I'm familiar with so that you, know, you may actually know what's going on with the turntable's overall design. Now the plinth itself is a multi-layer of plywood and it's really really nice. Um, the overall finish is nice. It, some people may not like the look perhaps, but for me, it is a very nice look. Now, I do have the ISO Acoustics um, uh, isolation platform under it to make sure that it's isolated properly, but also it has a feet on the turntable as well, and these feet are just simply squash balls. So one of the things that I like about Well Tempered is that they're practical in their testing. Through multiple listening sessions and through actual multiple listening blinded tests, they actually come up with these designs that sound better. So for instance, um, the squash ball, the reason they use it instead of every other traditional you know, metal pieces or stuff that can be you know, easier to mount onto a turntable per se, uh, is because they, it's, they just simply make it sound better. They, they just think that it sounds better. And I like that. It's fun to say squash balls, squash balls, but also it's very effective under amplifiers. I've used it myself and I've seen a lot of people swear by squash balls and it's effective. So that's why they use it. Just simply they find it, it sounds the best compared to every other feat they have tried. And that's what I like. They actually have tried other feet. It's not like they just settled with whatever they thought would work better, but they actually went through testing, you know, listening testing to see if any other alternatives were better. For the time being, squash balls is their choice. And if something better comes up, then they're willing to change. So I like that. Um, even the bearing, right? Before, I, I think I was talking to Bernard Lee and he mentioned it was a square before. It went from a circle to a square to a now a triangle. And simply because it works better, sounds better, and just continues on that way. Now, another classic example of this is the angle of the cartridge. Now, don't quote me on what the actual terminology is because I don't know. Uh, I wrote the notes here, but my phone died, so I'm gonna have to just go off my memory. So you, traditionally speaking, there's a traditional way of setting the you know cartridge angle, but the way that uh, well tempered how they set up the turntables is a different method. And if you have questions, I'll link to Bernard Lee's email so you can spam him and ask him all the same questions. What the hell was Jay talking about in this part of the video? But very simply, because I don't want to drag this too long, very simply, they did an A-B testing between this setup and this setup. It was the exact same turntable with just the cartridge, you know, alignment a little bit different. And they found that the 75% of the listeners actually preferred um, in a blind test one setting, which was the non-traditional way to set up cartridges. And they are now doing exactly that on their turntable because 
75% people preferred it in a blind A-B testing. So I like that. That is the way to go when it comes to R&D in my opinion. And it, to my surprise, it sounds warmer. This way of setting up the cartridge sounds warmer. Um, it sounds luscious. The, this turntable overall throws a sound stage and sound field that is enveloping. And listening to the same tracks on my title through my whole made DAC, which is a $5,000 DAC, this turntable sounds amazingly better. And yes, there is much more to do with a turntable that you have to do. You have to do the belt. And talking about the belt, they actually use a string. Again, one of those things like, really a string? On a $5,000 Canadian dollars, Canadian $5,000 um, turntable? That's kind of weird, but that's what they do. And I have no problem with that. In fact, you get a lifetime belt replacement because they're quite frankly cheap um, if you ever break them. So that's good, you know, that you don't get that too often. You get lifetime belt. They will just ship you a new belt every time you need a new belt. And of course, there's no buttons. There's no buttons in the front at all to change from 33 um, RPM to 45 RPM, for example. None of that. Techniques, you know, have those. You don't have that. That could be a complaint, but overall, it's very simply easy to ch uh, change because you just change from top to bottom and you have your, you know, tracking change. The motor is also a servo controlled motor in this, so it is very, very, you know, accurate. So overall, it's a very good high-end turntable, but without the frills, no, without the metal parts that are really expensive, make things really heavy for unnecessarily, you know, quieter noise floor. For me, a turntable really is similar to tube amplifiers. I say that because it's kind of like the unconventional kind of, you know, doesn't measure well, but sounds good kind of thing. I think it's wrong for turntables to kind of compete with DAX, in my opinion, to sound more detailed, you know, more uh, retrieval of detail and, you know, lower noise floor. Because because of the mechanical parts, if you see the noise floor of some of these turntables, you know, they get pretty low, but they will never be as low as, you know, a DAC. And a DAC, you know, you can get a really high-end DAC to get the lowest noise floor, sure, you know, no pops and cracks, if that's your thing. But if you get a decent phono stage, by the way, the phono stage I'm using right now is the Charisma Audio Phono Stage, musical, and it's an excellent phono stage. So if you get a, a phono stage like that with a pretty quiet cartridge like this, which is another design by Charisma Audio, their own cartridge they just came out with. Um, this is the Echo cartridge, and this is a really nice ceramic cartridge. So you can check the details in the description below for all the pricing and stuff like that, but pretty affordable under a thousand dollars. But back to what I was saying, like a turntable like this, an entire system that's dedicated towards musicality, in my opinion, competes with the DAC, you know, it's really hard to compete with the DAC, in my opinion. It's the same way how my reel to reel, right, being cheaper actually in the actual price of the unit but the music pieces itself is really expensive, right? They're, they can go for like 400, you know, a thousand easily. Reel to reel is hard to compete with DAX. Like it's a totally different thing. A DAX give you better analytical performance, 100%. But there's something about the analog warmth and it's not, it's just not in my head. I know it because like I keep hearing it multiple times. I keep coming back to it. I have all these DACs here, but I always turn to a turntable or my reel-to-reel -reel when I want to really enjoy and indulge in that emotional experience. And sure, it could be a ritual thing as well, but for me, I am not from a period of turntables. Turntable has been something that's new to me that I just got into because I love music and it just sounds better. So that's a kind of a different perspective from people that you know are used to that ritual. For me, it's a ritual that I am compromising because I'm a lazy ass, let's face it. I don't wanna wash my records and put it on and put my needle, uh, needle, stylus. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but you get the point. I'm a young audiophile. Um, I didn't have this experience before. I got into it and I fell in love with it because of the sound. So that's kind of a different approach to, oh, it's because it's ritual, it's all in your head. For me, it became a ritual because it sounds good. So overall, what does this turntable bring me? Let's end this on this note. This turntable brings me warmth that typically even r 2 DAX struggle to deliver. Sure, r 2 DAX, you know, like May or even uh, Denifrips, they have tremendous amount of warmth that you can really appreciate. But 
there's something about that analog sound that I just can't put my finger on it. It's, it's not just the warmth. It's like a tube amplifier. Tube amplifiers, when you listen to a tube amplifier, you get this warmth sense of sound stage that envelops you. It sounds fuller in my room. There's atmosphere going on. There's stuff happening inside my room, not just in 2D, but in three dimensionality. And that's what makes me really dis you know, separate audiophile gear from um, musicality gear, if that makes sense. That's just in my brain. I'm not, it's not actual thing, right? <laughs> just, just me, how I separate, uh, separate things. For me, tube amplifiers do that for me. This does it for me. When I have a DAC, it is three-dimensional, sure, but it doesn't have that enveloping sound that is emotionally grabbing as if you're there, you know, it's three-dimensional. Like the voices that's coming through, it's just same thing happens with my reel-to-reel -reel as well. So there's something about analog that I really appreciate and that is what I really found in vintage gear. Now this does it better. And while modern high end turntables are going towards the, you know, really detailed side of the game, you know, the three dimensionality and the love for analog is kind of losing its, you know, its uh, place in my heart. Uh, a turntable like this is really what really grabs my attention. It is extremely good. It is practical. It has no, you know, no frills, so to speak, with, you know, really big plinths and, you know, sh to show, you know, lights and blings, none of that. It uses a squash ball and sure, and I'm sure they're aware of people out there that may be like, really? A squash ball? Really? A golf ball? On a, on a $5,000 turntable? I think that it's $5,000, you know, is very granted, um, especially considering the sound quality and the R&D that goes into a turntable like this. So that's pretty much it for me and, you know, what I wanted to share with you guys before I uh, do my listening session in the morning today. Um, I hope you guys find a turntable and actually have a listen to a turntable that you like, that you appreciate the sound of, uh, like I have. Just don't listen to one turntable and then just you know, dismiss it entirely because it's overly detailed or it's two-dimensional or it's a sound that you don't particularly care for. Um, like I said, the so noise floor that you hear can be minimized with a good phono stage and a good cartridge uh, like the Charisma Audio. And they don't really have to break your bank per se just have to be decent. And yes, decent means some money, but you know, something that can be very achievable if you like the sound of turntables. But anyways, that's enough rant ranting from me this morning about turntables. I just absolutely love them. And I'll see you guys on the next one.